Ja sam Eda Janečka, ja sam bio narozeni na Dubina, ja sam jak prvi sose, tudi na Fejtkani, ja sam bival da brzom celi roki jak prvi. Vyval tam hlap na dubina, jméno bylo Tom Lee, on byl černý, on tam vyval a já jsem budu mluvit trošku o co Tom Lee tam dělal na dubina a jakový hlap on byl. On byl starý hlap, co dělal všelijaké kramy a on je už pryč, ale ještě tam jsou lidi, co pamatují, co on dělal. I have a, I wrote an article here about Tom Lee. Mm -hmm. Here it is. If you would, please make a copy of that for me, please. Okay. Thank you so much. What we do is every single week we have an article in the newspaper concerning uh, Fayette County history, and I wrote this on Tom Lee. And so, at any rate, uh, I, Tom Lee's a fascinating guy from the standpoint that he, I mean, I always had a, love for history and especially Fayette, Fayette County and, and Dubina history in particular. And a lot of that stuff, you know, I've done a great deal of research. It's hard to find a lot of information about slaves sometimes because, yeah, they were slaves. And uh, apparently this man was owned by the Hendersons and to the best of my putting pieces together, and a lot of this is oral history, is that at an early age he fought at the Texas Revolution, and there were some Hendersons there in the Texas Revolution at San, San Jacinto. His job was to reload muskets, and then somewhere along the line he was sold to a, someone by the name of Lee, and again was somehow involved in the Civil War. We know he was in the Civil War, and then became a free man, and, and ended up in Davina, and owned quite a bit of land there. And learned the blacksmith trade uh, from a fellow by the name of Joseph Petter, who was, Joseph Petter was, uh, the entre was an entrepreneur there. He owned the saloon and he owned uh, uh, the cotton gin and the grits mill and just a lot of different stuff. He also had a blacksmith shop there and he was also a state representative at one time. But uh, he was an interesting fellow from the standpoint that he was already getting older, but, but he owned a lot of land. He built one of the things that's kind of interesting, we have a Catholic church in Dubina, and it's it's on the something called the Painted Churches Tour. It uh, has a lot of uh, interesting uh, artwork and things of that nature. The steeple that uh, is on top of the church was made by Tom Lee, and that was done in 1887. And so this is the second church. The first time it was knocked down by a hurricane, but anyway, they put the steeple back up there. Also, there's a school there called Lee School which was named after Tom, and it was an African-American school. In Dubina, which was a Czech community, we had three schools, a public school, Catholic school, and, and a black school. The amazing thing is, and I have the, the death certificate, he was 117 years old when he died, if you can believe that. I mean, it's, it's an actual death certificate, and it, it, it talks about, you know, uh, he just died. And then doing more research, talking to, I was, I was walking around, this is years ago, and I was talking to an old guy, and I said, what is that thing there? And he said, I don't know. He said, it was, we're looking at, a, at a, some type of plant. And uh, he said, well, that comes from Tom Lee. He said he used to make tea out of that every single day. And it's a mullen plant is what it is. And I took some of the seed and I, I planted it. Of course, now I have it going up wild all over the place. But fascinating guy. He spoke Czech. Uh, you yeah, know, the fact that he could speak Czech obviously 
added a lot to because the people that lived there, I'd say, in those days, probably 70% of them didn't speak English, or 50% at least didn't. The older people, none of them spoke English. So yeah, if you had to communicate, and it wasn't only Tom, there were other, other black people that lived around the area that, that if you grew up in that area and you grew up with Czechs, you learned, you learned to speak the Czech language. I mean, you picked cotton with, with the blacks and, and you, know, you did everything with black people and that were back and forth. And so if you wanted to get along, if you wanted to, a job, if you wanted to do anything, you have to learn the language. Again, most of the people that were there, the older people, they didn't speak English. So it was a way of, uh, yeah, you had to do it. To uh, there was a fellow that I knew very well. His name was name Buck. And he was a, uh, a little person, let's put it that way. He was, uh, I guess, a midget. And he worked for Brazier Motor Company and, uh, in Weimar. And everybody knew Buck. As a matter of fact, they, you know, he, he died here. Uh, you know, times fly, but maybe 25 years ago, who knows. He used to love to fish, and I mean, I'd see Buck all the time. Yeah, and he spoke Czech, you know. I'd see him on the street or whatever, and, and we'd converse in Czech. Was that not uncommon at all for, for African-American people to be speaking Czech in, in the communities.